bears, wolves, moose. These are the majestic beasts you'd expect to see mounted on a wall in Alaska. But one bold taxidermist started bagging big game beyond his own borders. And when his little shop went global, his sales went through the roof. Meet Russ Knight. You get down here to his private parts, don't overbuild it. I'm Russ Knight, owner of Knight's Taxidermy in Anchorage, Alaska. Bringing dead animals back to life has made me millions. I got your warthog done. Nice. Taxidermy is truly an art form, taking a deceased animal and make it look alive. Wow, you look a lot alike. Well, we do have a <laughs> certain flair about us, don't we? Knight's Taxidermy is a full service studio based on fishing game numbers. I get between 25 and 30% of all the total animals taken in Alaska. So we're making some pretty serious dough. It's kind of a dirty job, and it's kind of bloody, and it's not always pleasant. But I love taxidermy and always have, ever since I was a teenager. As a kid, I was in love with the outdoors. So when I was a young fella, about 13 or 14 years old, I saw an ad in the back of Field and Stream, and it said, learn to mount animals. And this is the mail order course that I took right here that I paid a dollar a lesson for. All it was was drawings of what to do. But those drawings did the trick. 12 months later, Russ was a certified taxidermist and his skills were in high demand. The next thing I know, I got guys bringing me birds, foxes, and squirrels to school. Take them home and mount them and bring them back the next day. But it wasn't an overnight success. I struggled for many, many years, and I had to live off my wife's paycheck. And it took me a good 10 years to build a base of clients. And then it took another good 10 years to pay off debt and put a competent staff in place. But Russ was about to get a major boost from an unexpected customer, Uncle Sam. In about 1996, the federal government asked me to become a federally approved facility. And that meant I would become a importer exporter of wildlife and receive freight from many, many foreign countries. I was kind of scared of the federal government. However, they needed somebody they could trust. There's certain requirements. I mean, you have to have a specialized room that you can quarantine things in. You gotta have some very potent chemicals. You gotta know how to spot disease. So it's not really something that every taxidermist can do because their facilities may not can handle it. But Russ's can. And with federal certification as global importer exporter, he can mount hides for hunters from across the globe. A huge advantage when you're one of the only ones in Alaska. I've got clients from every corner of the earth. We do South Pacific work, Asian, African, Russian. That's one of our secrets to success. Cool. Today, Russ's revenue reaches $1.5 million a year, with 20% coming from foreign sales. Chop, chop, get to work. This is my third bear I got down today. Wow. When it comes to a life-size bear mount, I would charge $8,500 for. I'm going to make a profit of about $3,500. I'm going to do about 25 of those a year. Hunters aren't the only ones calling on Russ's goods. If interior designers or homeowners need a bear rug for a great room, Russ is the guy. When it comes to bear rugs, on average is going to cost about $1,700. I do about $300. I'm probably gonna make a profit of between five and six hundred dollars on that bear rug. That's a lot of bears. And this is the fur room. Probably two million dollars worth of skins ready to be mounted. We've got all kinds of animals. This right here is a brown bear, African kudu, black bear, steambuck. And this is kind of a very unique and rare bear. This is a cinnamon colored black bear. You see fur, I see dollar signs. 